Okay, today we're going to tell you how to build a transmission for tractor pulling. Now, hopefully it'll stand up on the track, but we're going to give you some pointers on how to put it together the correct way, and it should help you out in the long run. Uh, first thing you got to do is uh, first gut the transmission completely out, take all the bearings out of it, take out just the bare case. And what we're going to do, we're going to show you where you got to clearance the transmission case for the Dodge Dart rear end right now. If you put the Dodge Carrier in, you do a little. You got to grind this off, grind this down, thin this down, and thin it down right here. And once you get that done you'll be able to put the carrier in with the ring gear on and the, the bearings off and it'll slide right in for you. And when you're doing this grinding on these cases like this with this die grinder, make sure you use eye protection. It keeps your eyes in good shape after that and you can see when you're done. So remember that. Okay, the best thing to use for grinding is a cutoff wheel. It's what you use in an air die grinder. It works really fast and you'll see here it'll take the material off really fast. And it does a pretty good job too. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to show you where to clearance your case out to put like uh, the bigger gears in, or you're going to do a three-speed pulling set. First, we're going to do is take this this flashing on the grind on the casting. We're going to take this flashing down and smooth it out here and here, and over on the front side, there's the same casting there. The next thing we got to do, yeah, clearance for the bigger gear ratio, something like bigger than 21, two, three tooth in second gear and low gear. You got to clearance this off here so it clears. Now we never take this off all the way. If you use a three-speed. You clearance this down and use a, uh, a long set screw in here in neither shaft in place of the, the regular bolt for it to clear the gear. So we'll show you how this is done. Next step is to make sure you have all the gaskets removed from the transmission case and clean it up and then you're ready to reassemble it. You're going to start by putting the bearings back in the transmission case. You'll put the pinion bearing in, the top shaft bearing in. And then from there, the next step we'll do, we'll go to setting the rear end up. And we got to do the bearing preload first. That's the first step of it. So when we get done with that, we'll go on from there. So we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, now that we have the transmission case cleaned up, got the bearings installed, we got the pinion bearing down here installed, and this is the top shaft bearing installed. Next step we're going to do is we're going to install the uh, carrier in this particular situation we're using a transmission spool, a rear end spool. And here's the spool right here. Uh, we usually leave this bearing off right here. We'll put the trans this in, the transmission first, like that. I'll slip right in. And notice we don't have the pinion because what we're going to do right now, we're going to set the bearing, uh, carrier bearing preload. So let's get that set up. We're going to put the bearings on. I'm going to bolt this cap on solid. And then we're going to set it from the other side. So we'll get back to you in a little bit here. Okay, we got the carrier, or this, in this case, the spool installed inside the transmission. We got the left bearing cup tightened up tight against the face of the transmission. And there's no, no spacers on it, no shims at all. And now we're going to take the right bearing cup, and we put this onto the, into the transmission. Again, no shims yet, the bearings are there. I put a, beforehand, I put a light coat of film on the, on the bearings so they'd have, so they'd rotate easy. easy. We're going to put this in here, we're going to tighten the three bolts up. Just finger tight. Try to do this evenly. And then, once you get them finger tight down evenly like that, we'll take the ratchet. And we're just going to snug these bolts down evenly until we start getting some preload in this thing here. Okay, I started to get some bearing preload now. It's starting to have a little bit of load on it. The book says you should have one to three, one, one pound to three pounds of pull on these bearings. So, one to three pounds is about like this here. Once we get the uh, carrier bearing preload set, uh, what we do is a good rule of thumb to have it know if it's right or not. Just grab the ring gear, 
give it a spin, you want it to spin just by giving it a quick flick, about a half a round. Anything more, anything looser than that, it's probably too loose. Anything tighter than that, it's probably too tight. But usually we look for about a half a round of spin. And uh, that seems to be really close right there. Next thing we're going to do, now we're going to measure this gap right here with some feeler gauge and see what kind of shims it's going to take to get that kind of preload. What I do is I just take a stack of feeler gauges and keep playing with it until I get, get the right fit down here. And once we figure that out, we'll measure it, put that many shims in it. Getting really close there. Okay, that seems to be a pretty good fit. Pretty good fit there. Now we'll measure it. We're getting about 66 thousandths worth of shims. So now we'll take the cup loose and we'll get 66 thousandths worth of shims out and uh, see how it fits. Okay, we went and got 66 thousandths worth of shims. Usually the feeler gauge will get you really close to what you did. Matter of fact, we put 66 thousandths worth of shims here. A little bit tight, so we need to add another three and a half thousandths. Um, cup get makes shims for these things. The thickest shim is 28 thousandths, then it goes 14 thousandths, 7 thousandths, 3 and a half thousandths. That's the three different, four different shims that a cup that has. So you can just, you know, split the, split the uh, difference you need, get the preload you want. We'll snug this up and then check and see if our, our work is right now. It should be right where we need to have it. Okay, we got that snugged up. Yep, that's got a good, it's got a good fill to it. It's got about a half round of spin, so right there is the shims we're going to use later in the transmission to set the backlash. That's the total stack of shims because we know if we use all those shims that will keep our bearing preload right whether some's on the left side some on the right side to get our backlash correctly. Okay, in some transmissions when you're doing a small ratio gear set on the top shaft like say a 22 top gear for third gear and smaller the big bottom gear gets bigger and bigger and right down here this nub in here, here, here and here the gear won't hit, the gear will hit, it won't clear it. You'll need to take a grinder and, and remove this nub and down here and here on those four spots till that gear will clear when you have the bottom shaft in. So just a pointer if you're going to put like a 20 tooth gear in third gear or something smaller, you'll need to do some grinding on there. And then if all the way down, like if you have a 16 tooth for high gear, for third gear, you'll need to take that down. It'll be all the way down to the case down at the bottom. Around it, it's a pretty big circle. It's a lot of grinding, but you know, in about a half hour you have it done. Okay, in this part of the video we're going to be building a three-speed transmission with three pulling gears. Typical stock, stock Cub Cadet transmissions have a 13-tooth low gear, 19-tooth second gear, and a 26-tooth top gear uh, for third gear. That's the top gear count. Today we're building one for a, a puller. It's going to be 20-tooth. It's going to be low gear. 22 for second and 24 for uh, third gear. And the Low gear is 20 tooth and it has a 13 tooth on the back side for reverse. And that's going to go in here and it gets stacked up. The spacers here just get stacked up just like a stock fan, just like a four speed set you kind of build them like. You have the bottom spacer here, then you use just the stock reverse gear on the bottom shaft for there. And also this gear is thinner, this gear is thinner than the stock gears. You can kind of see the difference there. The thickness of them is a little bit thinner gear than this one, this is a little thicker. So to make up for that, we use one of these extra spacers on here. So we take that rear spacer, the four speed kit, plus an extra little spacer that will come with, will, will come with it. That will go on here, then your reverse gear in the bottom. And then you'll have the four speed face, spacer, this, this spacer right here, it goes right here. Low gear, separated by the little thin space between second and third, or second low, I should say. Here's second gear. There's third gear. That's how the stack will be. Then you use the stock front spacer on top of that. That will be your setup. You know, these gears here will run right here. We'll mesh with these. And this one here will mesh here. And also use the stock either gear, which will mesh with, the, with, will mesh with this low gear. This little gear here, not that one there. But one thing you want to do, which we'll do here in a second, you need to take a champ for the corners of this gear off. And that's what we're going to be doing next. And with this setup, you also use the four-speed shift forks with it too. So it acts just like a four-speed, but you got reverse instead of another pulling gear. You'll have three pulling gears with the reverse. So next step we're going to be doing is we're going to chamfer this edge, and then after that, we got to take and back cut this gear because this gear has got to be moved back in the case. And you can see right where this gear goes here, where this gear goes right here, it normally rides right here. Well, it's this far from the back of the case. 
So we need to move this gear and back cut that thing so it moves it back against the back of the case like this. So that's what we're going to be doing uh, also. Okay, now we're ready to chamfer the edge of this reverse gear. The reason we do that, that way it will, it will miss that idler gear for your neutral gate. Otherwise this gear has got the square corners on it. It'll catch that idler gear and it'll be uh, hard to find a neutral gate for the load and reverse. So we're just going to chamfer those corners off so it has plenty of room there. So we're going to do that right now. Just easily done. Just take and we'll put it up to the grindstone. Let's go around and chamfer the edge of the corners off. There you have it. Quarters are chamfered off, that's all you gotta do for that. Now be ready to put the train. Okay, the next step we're gonna do is be uh, machining the idler gear to move it back in case. The also thing you gotta do, the other thing you gotta do is this diameter here is too big, so when that goes back reverse, the other gear set will hit right here. So we gotta machine this OD down to clear the other gear. And uh, typically, this thing here measures mm, roughly about an inch 300. We usually take it down about an inch diameter. About an inch diameter is where we take that down to, that will clear that uh, other gear. So the first step we do is chuck it in the lathe. And we'll move this thing around here. And we just grab it onto the, the, the teeth here and we'll machine it down. Okay, we've got the front side of the gear machine to clear the gear. We'll grab on this in the lathe right now, and we're going to machine this back side. And usually I just take it and machine it up here to just underneath the teeth, up, you know, right where that colored mark is. Right where it changes color, and that will give us enough room to go around that boss inside the transmission. So we're going to check on the lathe next, and uh, we're going to machine this out. Okay, we got the gear. We got the gear machined out in the back side here, the idler gear, to go inside the case. And now this thing can fit right up beside the back side of that thing, really nice like that. So before it'd be sitting like this. Now it's going to be right up near the back of that case, and that'll give us enough room for uh, the neutral gate. So we got to do. We're going to install that next. First, we got to do is put the pin in. And we got what we use is machinery bushings. We use these three machinery bushings to take up the gap we cut there. These three machinery bushings are the same height as that. So we're gonna put them in here. We hang the gear up on the, on the little edge there. We just shove these things, shove that pin through here to get catch those washers. Like that. We're gonna slide this into here. Now you gotta you gotta make sure that this head of the bolt will hit the gear. So what I usually do, I just take and cut the head of the bolt off and cut a little slot in the middle, end of it, screw it with a screwdriver. We'll just use a uh, drop of Loctite on it. Okay, now we're going to assemble the bottom shaft for this uh, three-speed transmission here. We're going to put the pinion shaft in. We're going to put that 352 spacer plus a little, a little washer spacer there with it to make up the difference in that thinner gear. Put them on first. Put this 35 tooth bottom gear in here. We'll go with the big wide spacer. We'll go with the 32 tooth gear. That that goes with the 20 tooth for the low gear. Then we go with the thin spacer. Then we put the 30 tooth gear on. Then we go with the other wide spacer. 
and go with the front gear. Look at that. So slide them together here, so kind of rotate the gears around until they fall up on the shaft. And once you get in, you're ready to roll here. Okay, we got got this approximately, so it lines up good like that. That should be out where it needs to go. Put the front spacer on, and we're pretty much done with that part of it. Okay, we made a simple, it's a simple pinion fixture. It's a piece of uh, all thread, three eighths all thread, piece of half inch plate. We drilled a couple holes in the back that bolt onto the transmission housing back here. This tapered shaft goes in the middle of the pinion shaft, and just put these holes. I just bolt this thing on just temporary here like this. Holds that pinion in place for us. And then next we'll take the uh, cup. We're going to stick this inside the transmission case like this. Put this bolt on temporary with two bolts just to kind of hold it in place while we bound the bearing in place. Don't forget the shims. A good starting place is just take the shims that you took out of the transmission, stick right back on that. We're going to check the pinion depth here in a little bit. If you do that, 95% of the time your pinion depth will be okay when you're done. That's shoved in there now. What we do for the bearing, I just take a 3 quarter inch deep well socket, stick the bearing up on the shaft, put that on there like that, and just drive the bearing into the transmission. in all the way now. Now you can remove your bearing, your pinion holder fixture. And that part of it's done. Okay, we got the pinion in. Next we're going to take these bolts out here that held that thing in place temporary. And we're going to put this pinion bearing plate on. The tapered side goes to the bottom. That's made to clear the uh, front reduction housing. Just use, I use the stock two bolts in the bottom there. Like a three quarter inch bolt, then we use the one inch long 5 16 bolt from the top, and we'll tighten this thing down. Okay, we got that front pinion bearing plate torqued down. Next, you torque those bolts by the way to 20 foot pounds. Next, we'll put the big nut on here. If you don't have a if you don't have an impact tightness down, what you do, you put the top shaft in, you put it in two separate gears at one at one time, and then that will lock the transmission in place, and you can go ahead and tighten it down with the with the torque wrench. The torque spec on it is 85 foot-pounds. What we do, we torque this to tight with the impact, a uh, half-inch drive impact, and that works the best. One more hit. Next thing you got to do is stake that down. Use a staking punch. You gotta stake that nut in place so it don't back back off. Just put that on there. Give it a couple hits, and that will stake that nut in place. Nut staked in place now. And then we're ready to put the top shaft in. Last time I spoke to you, we were gonna put the top shaft in, but before that, it'll be a little easier. You can do that at that time, but it'll be a little easier now to put the carrier in. We're gonna put the spool in now, and we already got the shims and that stuff figured out. We just gotta get the backlight set. Make sure you put a light coat oil on those bearings before you go in there. Put that on. What we'll do again, just like last time, we'll put the left bearing cup in without any shims on, and we'll just snug it down with our fingers till we get the uh, other side put on. We'll get this thing turned to the right spot. These cups only go on one way, and usually, whatever way you go, it's the, it's the other way. Yeah. It's just bad, it's just dumb luck otherwise, you know, getting it right. Unless you mark it. If you get smarter than the machine, then you can mark it and then you'll know where it has to be. But if you go through life and as ignorant bliss, you'll just keep turning around until you find it. Okay, we got this side finger tightened down now. Okay, now we'll take the other one. Now we take these shims off that we had before. That's the shims we're going to use. We'll just take them off and set them to the side. Okay, this side, the right side, we actually marked the cup with a little X that goes on the bottom. Makes it a little quicker to get this lined up. Now you put that cup in, just like you did last time, we're going to do all the same steps basically. We're going to finger tighten these bolts down, 
until we get the backlash right, then we'll do this measurement again. And that should get us close to what the backlash should be. For the shims, for the right, right amount of shims for the backlash. You hear that right there? There's some looseness in there yet. You hear it rattling. I'm going to start, start snugging this up until we get the backlash disappears. We like to run our transmissions with zero backlash. The book costs for three to five thousandths backlash, but you'll find trying to pull them, it works better to have zero backlash in it. Keeps all that slop out of it. Tighten that set up a little bit. Try to get close to the right bearing, right, right bearing preload. Start loosen this other side up to let the whole thing move over. There, now we're at, we get right now. Right now we're at like zero backlash. You can check that real easy just by reaching here, wiggling the top shaft. You want to check that? Just go around it, make sure it's right. There, we, it's, it's, it's just a snug fit right now. So there's like zero backlash. Actually, part of this little bit of tension on, which is a good thing to have. And then uh, get that right. We're going to take a little bit of backlash off that, a little tension off, add, add a little more tension to it. There, that, that feels real good. And then you want to check why you got to this point. This is now we want to check your pinion, your pinion depth. If you look down there, if you look down there, you want this pinion depth. That pinion gear should be even with the ring gear. See how that pinion gear is right even with the ring gear? Right there is where you, that is a perfect set where you want that to be. You want a perfect mesh like that. If it's down, if, if the pinion gear is down below the ring gear, you're going to need to take some shims out of that shaft, out of that front spacer, so that all comes back a little bit. If it's sticking past here a little bit, you're going to take some shims and add to it to bring that out. So you want that just perfectly even like that. That will give you the correct pattern, wear pattern on here. And that will help your transmission survive on the track. Now we got this set where it needs to be. Now we're going to see how much shims it's going to take, and it's going to take obviously less than what we had starting out with. We're just going to do the same thing with some feeler gauges here again. Those are the thickest ones, now we're going to drop down to two. Let's just keep... There, that one's really pretty close there. We'll check it a couple spots, a little looser there, so we know it's going to be pretty close to this measurement. We've got about 36,000. So 36,000, so we'll take a 28 and a 14. That should give us about 36,000. It's about 39 right there. We're going to try the 39,000th one, and we'll see how it fits. Okay, we've got these bolts tightened down now. We have 39,000 worth of shims there, and that should get us pretty close where I think we need to be. It feels, it feels pretty good. It's got some, it's got some backlash, a little, little bit of pressure on there, but not bad. What we'll do, we'll kind of check our work now. We're going to take this bearing cup off, and we're going to put the rest of these shims on this bearing cup, tighten it down, see where we're at, and then if it feels right or feels tight, we can make the adjustment by that three and a half thousand shim from one side to the other. So we'll do that first and we'll be right back to you. Okay, we got the shims put in that side here and we had left over on the other side. We're just, we're just tightening these, these, these bolts down now. Now it's got the correct bearing preload. Now we're going to check the, the drag on it or the backlash to see if it's about right. And see it feels really good. Check for backlash. We have just very little backlash. Maybe a thousandth of backlash. It's just barely, barely anything there. So that is all set up, ready to go pulling. So what we're going to do now is just go through here, make sure all the bolts are torqued down tight. They should be. We'll get the torque wrench out here in a little bit because they're supposed to be torqued to 30 foot-pounds. And we'll do that here and then it'll be ready to go. Okay, we're just tightening the tight the bolts down, just finishing up. It's all at 30 foot-pounds of torque right now. We'll check the other side here quick. Okay, those are all torqued down. We're going to go. Now we're going to rotate the transmission around and we'll go for get ready for the top thing, top shaft together. Okay, we got the transmission installed as you see. We have all the gears in the, in the correct spot. The other gears there. Here will be low, here's reverse, low, second, third. We're going to install the top shaft now. So you want to put the uh, 24 tooth goes forward, 22 tooth goes to the second gear spot, and it'll be 20 tooth and 13. So we'll install this gear first. Slide it in the shaft. Take the next one here, slide this in the shaft, then we'll install the shaft here. 
or check to see what we've got, make sure we got a neutral gate, a good neutral gate. There, there's your neutral gate right there. What we're gonna do is install the next we gotta do is install the forks and uh, adjust the neutral gate so we'll, we'll be done with this. Okay, next thing we do is put the springs in there. We used to just use stock springs in ours. Some people sell the heavier detent springs. We don't believe in it, you know, we still people still have trouble with that. Use the stock springs, the stock detent balls, and use a, a physical a, a physical solid shifter lock where you lock it in with a pin on your shifter. That's that's the best and most sure way it's gonna hold in gear. So put the springs in. We're gonna put the ball the, the uh, balls in here. Them on each side. Thing you don't want to do is drop it on the bottom of the transmission. Now we're going to next install the shift rail. We just use a quarter inch punch to push down on the push down the spring. Get that one installed. Over the other side. Okay, that one's installed. Okay, one thing you gotta do when you're putting the forks in, it's only on the three speed setups like this with the three pulling gears. What happens is this shift fork sits in here like this on this gear and it slides back when you go back to second gear. When that goes back to second gear, this corner right here will hit on that reverse side of the gear right down here. It'll actually in, in lock right into the teeth of that. It'll lock right in the teeth of that thing and lock the transmission up. You'll go and we'll just lock it up solid because this will go right in between the two teeth of that gear. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this thing over there with a the little cutoff wheel and we're just going to take and remove this little bit this corner off here. Only just maybe about that much more, total of a half inch, and that way that'll be done, and then it'll clear, and it won't give you won't have any problems in. There we go. That should be good. Okay, we got that fork uh, ground off at the back there. We got it installed. We're just going to check it here quick. Before, just, before you put the bolt in, so it just slides back and forth. Just go back to the second gear. Go all the way back like that. If it turns over free, it'll clear. If it don't, if it don't turn over, it's locked up. you got to take more off. But um, that, that's all you got to do for that, and then it should be ready to go. I'm going to put the forks in. Left fork, just slip it over top of the gear. Should line right up. Push the, push the detent into the second detent, that's the neutral gate detent. Right there's the neutral gate one. Over there one, same thing to the other side. Stick this into the neutral gate one, the second detent. Here's the neutral gate one. Now what we're going to do now, we're going to find the neutral gate we like. What I do, the easiest way to do this is spin, spin it back and forth, spin it, move it back. There's your stop there. Here's where it starts hitting the gear there. You want to go kind of midway in between. So you want to make, just make a mark on the shaft, the marker. I like there. We want to drill that hole there to put, lock the fork to the rail on that one. Do the same way their way. And they should come up. This should come up pretty lined up right there like they are now. And we'll mark that one. Then all we do now is just take the shift rails back out, take the forks off, and we'll drill them, and then we'll reinstall them, and we'll be done. Okay, now we got the holes drilled for the shifters, shifter rails. We're gonna put the shift forks back in. Again, we're gonna slide them in place like we did before. We're gonna slide it back to the neutral gate as the second hole. Here, fork in. Same thing there. There, now we're gonna take and start the bolts.
Again, we're going to do like before. We're going to go back and forth until we find the nutrient. We like it. I like to space them toward the back, the back gear set more because most people have a, a rake on their transmission or the, or the front of their tractors down lower. So gravity will make those gears want to walk toward the front side of the fork. And it takes up the slop of that fork then. So we're going to go like right, right there. This seems to be pretty good. That one. I'll do this one here now. Really pretty good right there. And we'll take a socket. We'll tighten it down. Make sure you tighten these down pretty tight. You hate to have those bolts work loose and go down through the gears. It'd really be a bad day for the gears. There. Sounds like it's pretty good. Now we're going to check the neutral gates and the shift travel. We're going to go up here, shift this one forward, and you can see down past the gears easy enough. It's hard to see if you know what you're looking for. You can see it's, it's going full, fully in gear. I'll pry it back. I'll try the, the rear set. Get, get it to hit the gears just right here. There we go. And that, that's fully engaged. You see the gears right back there and see the bottom gear there. I know it's, it's going in all the way right there. And with this one here, go there. Yep, the gear's there. The bottom gear's right below it. And same with the next one here. We're going to check the last gear. Gears up against the back of the case, flush with the case like that. And the air gear below it is flush with the case, so that will go in gear all the way. And it goes back, got a neutral gate. So now we're ready to uh, turn the front side up. And we're going to do put the front reduction housing on now. Okay, the next step is put the front cover on. We use silicone rubber instead of the stock gaskets. Silicone rubber seems to work really well. And the stock gaskets, you know, seals up really good. So just put a little bit of silicone rubber on this. And we'll put it on the transmission. Pop right over top of those dial pins. That and tap it in there. Good. Put some bolts in there. You tighten it down, tighten it down on the on the dial pins. Pull the dial pins first, then work. Next thing you have to do after that is just put the disc brake in, which is an easy fit. It should slide right top of the pinion. It should, be slide, it should slide up and down that thing for least so it works. The best this is ever going to get here. So there you go. Don't forget to put your front spacer on. Put the big gear. Taper goes toward, toward the bearing. Okay, put your front gear on. Line it up, bolt, lock washer and flat washer on there, and tighten it down. You're going to use the impact on this thing because it rotates the way that it wants to loosen, so you want to make sure you get it tight. Now you're going to put the, put the uh, disc brake puck in. Got to clean this up yet. Put a little oil on the o-ring, put it in there, tap it right in, and put the front cover on. Okay, the other thing we do on these transmissions we put together on the front covers here's a stock front cover on retouched the front seals won't go through it what we do we'll take a machine that hole out to an inch and three quarter now that seal will pass through it so you can do a quick change pinion use a three inch coupler on the drive shaft slide the coupler forward and you can pull the pinion out and replace it with a one over pinion right at the track and there's no taking the cover off or nothing and your center support bearing on your drive shaft will hold the drive shaft in place to keep the pinion from coming out the other thing we do too is take this on a sanding disc and just sand the OD the seal down so it don't fit so tight in the hole because that's what holds the bearing in. That way it won't be so hard to pry the bearing out of the hole without breaking the hole because sometimes you put a bolt there and try to pry it out, you'll actually break the end of the pinion off. And the way to keep that is use the coupler, stick the bolt in the coupler, 
Leave the bolt out of the drive shaft, then pry the coupler in the drive in the pinion forward, it'll come loose. Then you can get out the rest of the way after take the coupler the rest of the way off. But with this way, this this won't fit, fit in there as tight. Just to be able to take a it just it just taps in real easy. And then that's where you go. You see when this when we'll put some silicone on the sills on here. But I'll show you here, all lined up, that will pass right through the hole. Okay, the last step of this transmission is to put the axles into the spool. These are the Super Cub spools, or the fine spline axles. What you're going to do is slide the axle into the hole. You want to look down in here, once you get engaged, you want to make sure you get it lined up with the this cut here has to go right where the roll pin is. So you line up so the roll pin goes there, put the roll pin in place, then pound that roll pin down through there, it'll hold the axle right where it needs to be. Okay, that one's in all the way. Then the air axle should button right up against this other one, and the air roll pin will go in. Put it through like that. Grab the roll pin in. And there you have it. Now you have yourself a transmission that's ready to run for the track. Axles are in. Backlash seems really good. Gear shifts work good. It'll be ready to, roll, ready to go pulling.